musket, or the arquebus as it was known in the early period, and that's what we're going to have a look at right now. These men are the musketeers. You can see that the weapon they're carrying is a smooth bore musket. That means that the, the, the barrel itself has no rifling in it. A slow match which is dipped into an open pan on the top of the musket which will then ignite the powder within it. But to do that they have to go through a series of drill instructions from the manuals of the period which were very long and complicated and which this gentleman is now going to go through. Open your pan. Opening the pan is the, the pan at the top of the musket. Clean out your pan. You've got to clear it out to make sure there's no loose powder there that might go off. Axe down home. home your charge. The charge inside the barrel and make sure that it's tapped and down. Right down to the end of the barrel because at the end of that barrel is the touch hole leading to that pan at the top of the musket. You've rest your musket. Handle your match. Now the match is rope cord that has been soaked in saltpeter. It makes it burn very, very slowly. Cock your match. And of course this was essential. They're now putting it into the, the serpent, so-called because of its shape, at the top of the musket. And the serpent is linked, of course, to the trigger mechanism. They have to make sure... ...about face to the right hand, about face that it goes in properly, of course. Now, ladies and gentlemen, very shortly, there will be a bit of a noise. So if you have any husbands of a nervous disposition, it's time to hold their little handies now. <laughs> Prepare to give fire. Yeah. Give oh, fire. <laughs> Recover your musket. Yeah. On hot days, when there was no wind, that smoke would simply hang like a pall over a battlefield. But this is just from this amount of musketeers. Imagine, if you will, 2,000 muskets firing all at the same hit. So they took their dagger and they stuck it down the end of the barrel. All of a sudden, they had their own pike. The French took it one step further by the introduction of a bayonet, a ring around the bottom of a dagger which can be fitted over the barrel. And the parliamentarians would both have men, very skilled swordsmen usually, they're known as the ensigns, and they would be the ones who would be carrying the colours. And many of these men would die fighting incredibly bravely against much, much worse odds than you can believe because they would not give in, they would not let the colours fall. To lose the regiment's colours would be an incredible disgrace. So these men would fight and fight and fight, and the regiment would do their best to maintain these colours. But of course the colours are so big and so colourful because they need to be seen across the battlefield. That they can interpret as orders, and that noise is provided by the drum corps. go around attacking each other whereas in fact their job was to hit the infantry and to stop the infantry from getting any further. Once they saw me come in various sizes and we're about to hear exactly how they sound. 